Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. Today I have a quilling video. Um, as you can see, <coughs> oops, I've been a little bit busy. Um, we went to, last week, we went to run an errand in Fort Worth, and while we were there, we went to Daiso. It was a spur of the moment thing, and I bought these little teeny containers. When I say small, I'm not kidding. They're like, you know, I had little hands, so that should say it. Um, there's four compartments on each side, and each side flips up, and each one of these containers was a buck seventy-five. I mean, come on. Um, here's the other one. It's got different stuff in it. And this, which is stuff I've been working on. So I'm going to show you what I'm working on. Because I think there's more than one way to skin a cat. What a horrible expression. Anyway, um, these are flowers about to be made. These are strips that you can buy in a package. I think I threw the package away. It's a long, white, uh, clear, see-through, cello-type thing. And you get, like, uh, this one right here that looks like fence posts. You get it in red. Two shades of red. Oh, that's, is that a white? Nope. Yep, that is a white. How'd that get over there? Anyway, and then you get these that are, uh, look like petals. And they're very, <clears throat> they're pressed together. I think they're cut in a, out of a sheet of paper and then all that cl is clumped together. So what you have to do is, <laughs> you have to hurt cats. You have to pull them apart because they're, you know, they're, together. So when you feel like it's really thick, it is. It's because there are two strips that are still kind of melded together. So that's those. They come in white and red. Then you give these other post, um, fence post things, like the white ones, in a light pink. What is this? This is white. This should not be there. Sorry. I had them all organized earlier today and then pushed them this way to make room on the desk and then you have a a mishmash. All right, so here's the fence posty looking ones. Then you get the scallops, which come in white, red, and pink. So you're limited to these three colors in here, but you are not limited to your creativity. So let me show you what I've been making. Now, I've had this machine for a long, a long, a long time. They don't make them look like this anymore. This is called a fringer. And what you do is you feed your paper through down here. Let me go this way. You feed your paper through here, and you go like this. There is a guillotine-type blade right here, and it slices your paper to where it makes it French. This is called a fringer. Um, let me pull out. I've got leftover paper in here. Where's my tweezers, my good tweezers? Okay. Maybe not. Ugh. All right, so let me take this right here. Sometimes paper gets stuck towards the end. Paper gets stuck in it. So let me pull that paper out. So when I put a piece in there, you're not going to see the see it'll leave you left over. Okay, so this is how a fringer works. You can either buy stuff like this, which is method one, which is fine because I I was gifted this stuff. I did not buy this. Um, <clears throat> Method two, and this is, let me say that this is not an inexpensive method now. I looked at fringers on the internet or Amazon, and I saw like this really deluxe looking tall, fringy thing. It was $70. I did not pay that for this. And then when I bought this, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago, um, my husband, I, I didn't, I had a hard time putting it on the table, keep it from scooting around. So my husband, put it on a wood block for me so that all I have to do is when I do it is hold my fingers down like this and then go like this. I'll show you how it works in a second. All right, so the second fringer, which I haven't, I've had it as just as long because I bought two of them, um, does not work as well as the first one. Now this is a fringer that cuts at a diagonal. This one just cuts up and down. So this one does diagonal and I'll show you what it does in a second. But it cuts diagonal, which I've tried working on this morning, and I don't think it's working properly, but 
I'm still going to keep at it. I think my screw is coming undone. It keeps it from doing what it's got to do. See, it's not the blade's not making contact with the paper. It's only making contact with metal. It's supposed to cut the paper and move it along through here as it cuts it. Okay, so that's where we are with that one. So let me show you how to make the fringe. Um, the fringe method, you can have, there are plastic fringers out there and there are metal fringers out in the world. And let me tell you, they're not cheap. The, I can't remember how much the plastic one is, but I know the metal one that I saw was, I don't know if it was two blades in it or one, but it was $69.99 on Amazon. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you sideways here. It's going to be a little hard. There's a metal bracket right here that is lifted up from the base so that you can slide your paper underneath it. And you slide it in there. And then there's a little wire, which is the trigger mechanism for this that's connected to this here. And I have to pull this up and then I scooch it down to get it started. So I have to scooch it underneath a wire. Ooh, come on. You know you want to go, which holds it down so that it's nice and snug. Only problem is it's so snug, you have to feed it through here. All right, so it goes underneath a spring. Uh, it goes underneath a wire thing right here. Then you move it along, and then there's another metal piece right here that's elevated away. So you, your paper will go underneath there while it's fringing it. So I scoop my paper, and then this goes up and down. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is, I hope I can get this so you can see it. So you're just going up and down. Come on, move. <laughs> of course, now it's going to decide not to work. All right. You just go up and down on it, and then it feeds the paper through there, and it also puts little tiny cuts. Yeah. See, it's better if you do it on a flat surface so you can really give it what for. So you just keep going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, which I really rather need, I need to do it on here. Now, if you have dexterity problems or arthritis, this is probably not going to be the machine or the method for you. There is one other method. Well, actually, there are, well, yeah, it's one method, but there's two applications for it. I want to finish the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so we're at the end, and it, it does twist your paper a little bit. Not a problem. All right, so I'm going to... Uh, do I wanna, I'll do it whole. All right. Okay, so here's one method. I'll show you another one in a second. Um, the second thing is, is to cut your own, cut your own. Now, this is one of the things that came in the, in this, this grouping underneath here. Let's move this. Were these, and I've used up almost, let me move this here, almost all of them. But what I did was, when I rolled these, I did not like the way the flower looked. And these are fringed just like what I did in that little machine. The m little machine does it uh, closer together. This one, they're wider apart, and I don't like the way the flower turns out. So what I do is I take my scissors, and I go in between where they've cut into the solid part, and I cut even more fringes on it because I think the flower looks better the more... F oh, yeah, there you go. That's a hazard of doing this. Not All is not lost. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Let me pay attention for a second so I don't cut through my paper. Uh, and done. So what you're going to end up with is a piece that's half yours, half the factory's, which is essentially what you get here. This is more consistent than my cutting, but there is a difference. I don't know, can you see the little fringes there? Okay, so there's that method. Now, I saw a woman on um, Pinterest do this, and I almost had a coronary. 
Okay, so she takes a piece of paper, and she did a very thin piece of paper. I'm not going to do that so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. I'll show you how to do it here. She takes the, this is a uh, one quarter inch strip or six millimeters. She took it. She folded it in half. It doesn't remember right side out. There's a right and wrong size, but now she didn't put a huge crease in the end. And then she started doing this. And I was blown away by her precision and her commitment to doing this. I was like, oh, let me go look for my fringer. <laughs> that drove me to look in the drawer um, to see if I could find my fringers. I had cleaned out a bunch of my um, quilling stuff a couple years ago and sent some stuff to my niece. And I thought I had sent my fringer or the fringers as it turned out, I had not. So I'm so thankful that I didn't give them away because I am not going to do this every time I want to make a flower because honestly, it makes your hands hurt. Even if you have an ergonomic pair of scissors, it still is a huge commitment. If you make five or 600 flowers, you're going to wish you had the fringer because you can sit down in front of the TV and just run one strip right after the other through it. And yes, you have to keep up going up and down and I don't know if the new fringers have a better setup or not because I'm going to hang with the old one because they're paid for and I'm not paying $70 for a new fringer. Just not in the cards for me. So I don't know if these are consistently cut. I'm praying they are. I can't see what I'm doing because of the lighting in here. I push my big light over this way so you guys can see what's here because if it was like this, yeah. You guys couldn't see, but I can. <laughs> so that's why it always, my lighting looks the way it looks. I hope I've cut this good enough because I want to finish the whole thing. All right, so you just keep going. And you have the same effect as if you had bought the big white ones and then cut them small or you used a fringer to do this. Same thing. One is, uh, all of them. I think are labor intensive, especially if now if you're only going to make one or two flowers, no biggie. You can cut these with scissors. They also make whoop, multiple laying cutting scissors. Uh, where's the last one? Where you can just make one cut and it spaces them out. There's got like five or six blades on it, and you just go like that. That would be a whole lot simpler than doing this. That's for darn sure. Okay, so I think I got both in. So you end up with this, and then you unfold it. And see, this is the one the fringer made. This is the one I made. And then there's the one that, the, that came pre-done that I cut the stuff in between. All right, so those are all three methods you can use to fringe flowers, quilling flowers. All right, let me see. This one is the fringer because it looks better. <laughs> the key to doing the flowers is you roll stuff differently than in your head you think you should. So this is the wrong side. Let me see. Yes, this is the wrong side. So while you're rolling, you want it to be on the wrong side of the paper, which means the paper where you can tell the paper's been cut and it leaves a slight edge on both sides. So you just roll and you try your best not to rip the paper. It's so easy because, you know, there's cut a million cuts in it. And you try your best to keep the bottom even. So you just keep going. And this is not something you can whip out and rush. Because if you do, you'll break your paper. Or this will run down the, the tool. And it'll look really sloppy. God knows I've done it enough times. I'm going to pull this out. And then I'm going to tamp down the top so it's flat and the bottom will be flat. I'm just going to do the last of this by hand because I need to get to the glue. We're going to glue the end. And then I'm going to tell you this in advance. Once I do this to get the coil, or some people call them pegs. I think the pegs are the smaller ones. The coil is like this. But once you do this and you get it glued, you can either leave it unglued on the very bottom or you can glue the very... I got a pin in my mouth. You can, you can glue the very bottom so it doesn't come unraveled. So you definitely have to glue the end down. 
and you can do this now or you can do it after you unfurl the flower. You can take your glue and glue solid on the bottom here and let it sit on the side until it dries so that it doesn't go bing. Um, this doesn't bing as bad as some other stuff, whoops, some other stuff that I've done, but it will happen if you're not careful. All right, so here's how you do your flower. You flip it over to where all your little fringes are and then you take your thumbs or your fingers and you start spreading them out. You can leave them in tight or you can spread them out so your flower is darn near flat and then you can spread out the middle. So there is your fringed flower. So you probably should always glue the bottom. Let me not put that pin in my mouth. You should always um, glue the bottom so it doesn't come undone later because you're going to hate yourself because it'll be a bear to re-roll. This is the voice of experience speaking. So I just glue the very bottom of it and then I just leave it upside down. It takes 15-20 minutes for this art glitter stuff to dry. It's like no time at all. And now I can't find the pin. <laughs> you guys, oh here it is. Y'all will see where I put it. Alright, so the other day I was watching a video of a woman who made flowers and the inside part to her flower is the fringe method. So that's what started me on all the, jigging all this stuff out was so I could make one of these. This is done with a, what size are these? This is an eighth of an inch, but she used one millimeter. This is three millimeters. I don't own one millimeter paper and it's hard to find. Um, and then the rest of these are done with the same, the same width as this, as this, the petals, and then you glue them on a template, stick a wire through it and call it a day. So I was really fascinated by this, so I made two of them. There they are. She called them chamomile flowers, but they look like kind of like daisies to me. Mine did not turn out the way hers did, but I'm sure eventually I'll get there. I think I tilted my petals in like this and they should have been more up because they look like, you know, they're in a drought. <laughs> they look thirsty. All right, so there's that. Okay, so let me show you. You're not limited to these things here for colors. Let me get this out of the way. So the next thing you can do to make really cute flowers is to gussy up what you have. You really only need to buy white strips. Seriously, that's all you need is white because you can make them beautiful on your own with all your stuff you have already, which I did yesterday and this morning. So what I did was I took these Excuse me, I was watching TV with Hubs last night. Wouldn't really pay attention to what's going on because I had to look at these. So what I did was, where's my paper? I took these, and I, I want to make this one, one big flower, but I want it to look different everywhere. So I want to do the inside center of the flower. So I took my pastas. I hope you can see this because you can see I've already practiced on here. I took my Posca. Whoop. There we go. And I just kind of ran the Posca over the ends. The French part. The solid part's what I'm holding on to. And I really don't care if any white shows. No big deal. You'll understand why in a minute. Alright, so that's going to be my yellow center. Then I thought, well, you know, I might like to do stages of color. So, you know, the flower is like either darker in the middle or lighter in the middle, and then it progresses out. So this is what I came up with. Let's see. This is the lightest pink I have in Posca. This is my medium color Posca. And then this is a little bit darker, I think. There's, I, I, They might be the same. I'm not sure but I'm going with they're not. I looked on here to see if I could find a number anywhere. This is called pink. And the sad thing is this one has no color number, no name, no nothing on it. The little ones, mm -hmm. they don't have anything on them. So I don't 
I don't know what this is. I can't find anything to say that they're the same. The lids look the same to me, but what do I know? So this is what I'm doing. I'm taking this light one. Shake it up. And then I'm going to go down here. Do I have a big fat one of this so it'll save me time? Yes. Let me do this one because this will take all day at this rate. Good. Okay. So then, uh, so is it you? Yeah. Okay. So I just go down here. Oh, this one seems a little darker. Oh, it is a different color pink. How about that? Okay. It's all right. It'll work either way. I don't care. All right. So sometimes I do one third, one third, and one third, but not today. Um, let me do this little one here, and then I'll try the big fat one and see if there's a difference in the colors. Now I've done this with watercolor pen, um, watercolor pens, watercolor brushes. Sorry, watercolor brushes. That's what all this mess is. It does get messy. I mean, you get a little bit on your fingers, but it's not like you can't wash this off because this is basically acrylic paint, and that stuff comes off a whole lot easier than ink. Let me so do that. And then we'll transition to this one, which does look like it might be a little different. Not by much. Maybe it's because it's wet. I don't know. So we're going to go all the way down. And you may pull some of the little teeth out, the little fringy parts, it's okay. It's not going to matter in the big scheme of things because you're going to have so many fringy parts no one will ever know that you plucked a couple out. Okay. Whoop. Let me get the end. Now I did try it where I colored like all the way down. It makes no difference. It doesn't change how your flower looks. It's fine. All right. So now we need the tool. Remember, you roll it on the opposite side because the nice side is the side the petals will be on as like your color. So you put it in the tool. Maybe, see this one's getting old. Ugh. I hope this is only one yet. All right, so you try to push it as close to the end and then you just roll gently because if you break this, you're going to have to glue a lot of stuff together or quit. <laughs> I'm not a quitter. I'll glue stuff because I want it to turn out. There we go. If so, it's okay if it bleeds through. Really and truly, it, it's not going to make a difference. All right, so let's do the glue the very bottom. You don't want to glue up high. You only want to glue the last little tad on the strip because you want those petals to be able to unfold. All right, so this is what it looks like. Focus before you, let me do it on the white there. Before you do it, unfold it. You have to gently pull this out. Then I tap it down so that everybody's flat. The bottom's flat, the top's flat. Then, take your thumb and there is your multicolored flower. You have the dark pink on the outside, the light pink near the yellow, and the yellow in the center. And it looks like a multicolored flower. Isn't that cool? So if you just use white strips and you don't use any other color, you can color all these to your heart's content. So let me show you some of the others that I've done. I was playing around with, <clears throat> excuse me, different colors. So this one is white, orange, and yellow. Then I took one of the other ones that looks like the pointy fence post that was white, and I colored it with an orange a watercolor brush pen and this is what I got. It looks kind of like a lotus. 
What's that? And I already showed you the red and well, no. I did this one with white and red and yellow, which made me want to do the others because I thought, well, no flower is going to look like I want to try something different. So I did. Let's see what else we have here. I also played around with, uh, there's the, I did purple, and I had a very tiny strip, very skinny, the 1 8 strip of um, quilling paper, and I made, it broke. It broke. And so all I did was just cut little tiny slits in it by hand with scissors. I want to shoot myself. And um, I rolled it up, and it was so small, I used it for the center of my flower. So nothing goes to waste. See, here's you got the, the white on the back that came from the, the pre cut stuff. So if you don't have any of this equipment, it matters not because you can make anything out of scissors and a strip of paper and a couple markers. You just don't need 5,000 moving pieces to make something cute. I, told, I showed you I did the orangey one, right? Yeah, I already showed this, I think. Okay, so let's see. We already showed this one. And the glue, did I glue this guy? No, I need to glue this one. This one's glued. So now you have a good sturdy thing that's not going to spring apart. And then this one will go in this little container where I put some of the orangey yellow ones. Now these little containers are not going to hold a lot, but I'm not making 5,000 of these because... Oh, well, I might have just told a lie. Anyway, <laughs> so I've just been playing around with these. And there are the white ones that I did of the plain paper. You know, the plain white. They look just as lovely. And then you could tip these with a um, watercolor brush pen after they're done and just break it across the tips. So it's just, you know, it looks different. So that's it. So that is all the ways that you can make pretty flowers and not have to spend a lot of money. You can definitely cut stuff by hand. Let's see, is this the Fringer? No, I already did the one by hand. This is the Fringer, the machine one I did. Let's see, we can roll this up. Oh, but the dig tool. Is this the right side? That's the wrong side here. Let's go back down this way. And this one's fixing to break, so let me just break it right now and get it over with instead of crying later. All right, and it looks like I cut, it got cut too skinny there. All right, here we go. So we're going to just roll. Ooh, that one's cut really low. It's okay. So I'm going to break it and show you. All right, so it's very small. Don't freak out. I know, every time I, I would have one that would break, I'd be like, oh gosh, what am I going to do with it? And then I discovered that I just made smaller flowers or the insides to other flowers. So there's this. I'm going to roll it. And then... You can, uh, you can unroll it here this way. Now, it's not going to be as cute if, if it doesn't have as much stuff. And it already popped from the middle. I should have glued it first. That happens with the little ones. All right, so then you can put this inside. Uh, you can use this one. You have this one. You have no center. All you have to do is just glue this and then... Your lovely white flower has a little more color to it. Don't waste things that break. Put them in a separate container so that when you need something later, it'll be there. So let me show you what I'm talking about. These are things that didn't go well. I did not calculate properly. I didn't measure. There's one that's crimped. Um, made something I wanted, uh, did something I wanted to try and the paper was too thick. I needed skinnier paper. I don't throw these away. I save these because they do come in handy later. I tried to make a basketball. Yeah, not successful. So I hang on to them. Then I have these that are super duper small. These are the very tight little pegs or Tight, they call them pegs or tight coils in all different colors, sizes, shape. It doesn't matter. I save them because they could be the center of a flower. Here's the other ones that are smaller versions of what's in here that are petals. There are loose coils. 
They're uh, teardrops, diamonds. Here's one that's... I should have used in my uh, succulent plant. So th there's just all kinds of stuff in here. Miscellaneous things that didn't go well. I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't like the color. And so you just pop them in a container and save them. Wait, let me put this back in here. Or I'm going to lose this thing. Then I have this container that are things that I've kind of finished. I'm looking for um, a different application for these. So I don't, I don't ever get rid of these either. See, look, this is fringed, and I'm not crazy about it, but I saved it in case maybe in the future I will use it. Let me show you what the future looks like. Where is it? Oh, hang on one second, I'll go get it. So this is the future. It is a bowl made up all, all of coils and pegs and teardrops and this, that, and the other that I was trying to minimize my supplies. And I saw somebody made a bowl of this stuff. This thing is about 15, 17, 18 years old. I mean, it's old. Then I, I got them all glued together, and then I took... Uh, I did a horrible job doing this, but I took some kind of a, I don't know, it's not epoxy, but some kind of stuff that makes it like hard as a brick and it's hard. Shiny. Way too shiny for me. A little globby, but I love this bowl. So let me tell you how I made the bowl real quick. Of course, you know, I don't have a bowl handy. All right, so this is how I, it was made. Let me throw this stuff in the trash real quick and I'll show you. All right, got to empty trash out of another bowl. So you take, now I used a glass dessert bowl. You turn it upside down. You cover it with saran wrap and you tuck it up inside here. Then you take each one of these little things and dip them in glue and glue them to the saran wrap. It takes a long time, especially when they're itty bitties like this. They, they wouldn't take as long if they were, you know, bigger ones like this, but I had little tiny ones and that's what I was going to use. So then you get everything on there. Once it's done, you kind of dab in these areas because your coils will cave in because you've only glued the sides together. That's why you seal it so those things don't mash in because they will if you don't try to, if you don't seal it in some way. So once it's done, you take the saran wrap off the bowl, you pull the saran wrap out and pray nothing comes apart. And it did. A couple things came apart and I had to kind of put them back in there and re-glue them. Then I sealed it so that it's hard. It's really hard. So that's how you make a bowl of your scraps. So don't get rid of things like this. You think you will never use them. That is so not true because this is this is my living example of no throw away. All right, guys, this is it for my obsession with quilling <laughs> for this week. And maybe I'll be back to making books soon. I don't think so, but who knows? So I will see you in the next video. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye.